painting can begin, the antlers are going to receive a good little, a good cleaning, a good washing. The reason for that is really simple. Um, there is dust on the antlers, on the castings from um, from sanding and whatnot, and the grinding. Also, the resin itself is a petroleum byproduct. Okay, so there are oils that are exuded during the curing process of the resins. So I'm going to take it over to my little sink, turn on the hot water, wet the antlers down. I already have some Dawn detergent on a sponge. And I'm going to go over the antlers real wide. I want to get them nice and clean. Suds it up, soak it up real well. I noticed when I was brushing on the paint that it was beating in some areas. Now that's just from the oils, the oils of the resin itself. Rinsing. Hot, wa hot water, the hotter the better. Now I'm going to dry them with uh, a cloth and some paper towel, cover them overnight to sit, and they will be able to dry overnight. As you can see here, I've, I've gone and wrapped the skull, skull plate areas with blue painter's tape to keep the uh, overspray from hitting it. Now, even though these are, these are going to be used uh, in a mount, um, I thought uh, those who are interested in putting together um, you know, a set of antlers for display on a wall or who would like the skull to show, I'll go ahead and I will paint the skull plate white after the antlers are done. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to use my, um, I have a Pache Talon uh, airbrush here. It's a gift from my wife last Christmas. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint both the base color and then the brown color, which are actually two base colors. I'm going to go ahead and airbrush them on the antlers. And then from there, I'll, go, I'll let that set several hours and then I'll come back with the oil paints and I'll start uh, to weather and to... Uh, uh, tint and um, you know actually get all of the color of the antlers uh, to match the originals as close as I possibly can so we're gonna get started the uh, Pache Talon airbrush is a gravity fed airbrush that's why it has a it has a built-in cup on top rather than a siphon where it has to suck the paint up from the bottom I'm gonna start with just a few drops of the uh, the Vallejo 7-1 0.075075 that's the sand color the yellowish sand color I'm going to put a few drops of this into the cup on top of the airbrush I'm going to add some thinner I'm going to cap it this nice it has a cap so you can't spill paint I'm going to go ahead and cap it and I'm going to start painting The first set I'll be painting will be the last set that was that was cast, and that's the uh, the set where all of the tines came out perfectly except for the one on the end, and that's been repaired. So let's paint. This is the yellow base, the, 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 the undercoat, I guess you'd call it. I'm 
Let me show my paint is thoroughly mixed up. Yep. Put the cap back on. And let's start covering the outside of the antlers. Now I need to pick it up and just handle it so I can get the paint everywhere. I'm getting really, really good coverage. I'm going to put this down in the little holder that I have for it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to use a hair dryer on it to speed up the drying of the paint. The Vallejo model air paints are an acrylic paint, by the way. A little noisy today. <laughs> Imagine that coming from me. A little noisy in here. Whoa. All right. I've got a nice dull yellowish finish. And the nice thing is once it's dried, you can tell the areas that you've missed. And I have to go over. I have to make sure I cover this part of the tine right here. And you, you, you can see pretty well. The, uh, the color variation between the two sides. Well, first of all, you could see it that it's been sprayed. You could see the spray, the overspray on the painter's tape. But then you can see the color differential between the two where the paint has hit and where it hasn't. There's definitely, definitely a color variation here. And this was the darker brown uh, mix of resin that I used. I'm going to go over it a second time on the one side, make sure I cover every every area where there's a little paint that's a little missing. The tip that was repaired has covered real, real exceptionally well. I'm pleased with the way the paint covered that. And this is applied with an airbrush, so it has a good, good covering uh, capabilities, a good covering quality. But I'm going to continue on with the painting.
Okay, I think I have to mix up another little batch of paint. This holder is also a, uh, a jar that you can utilize for, um, you can shoot your thinner into this jar while it's sitting on the paint holder. And it's nice because it keeps it from going out into the air. Make sure the paints are mixed up real well first. I do this between each, each use. I mix the paints. Now let's get this in here. Oh, there's a good amount. Okay, I've stopped worrying about how many drops I'm putting in. <laughs> it's getting squirts now. I'd say thinner to paint ratio is about 50-50. It's about half and half. So, just using the handle of a paintbrush to mix it. And like so, wipe that off. Cap back on. It's really nice. This, this keeps it from spilling. This is nice. A nice feature. A nice feature. Make sure we have air coming out. Oh yeah, now I can I can see the, I can see the mist of paint coming out as I go now. Getting a good flow. I think I have some pretty thorough coverage now, complete, complete thorough coverage. You can see the sheen to it when it first goes on. And the air dryer, the hair dryer I should say, will allow it to dry and dry flat, which is what you want. Now off to the other side. That was the left side of the antlers. Now on to the right. Time for a paint refill. All right, there we go. You keep the dryer going until there's no more shiny, shiny spots. Now that's one set of antlers with the yellowish uh, ivory sand color base. Okay, I've got both sets of antlers with the ivory sand base coat. I'm going to allow them about an hour or two to really dry. Um, the hair dryer surface dries them, but I want them to completely set before I apply the next overlay of the uh, US sand color on top. 
I may have to uh, pop down to the hobby store and I just ran out of thinner in a small bottle. I have a little bit left in a large bottle, but it may take a little more than I've got to be able to complete this job. So, ah, such is, such is life. All right, this next layer of the uh, U.S. sand is going to be real, real light. Not going to be as uh, pervasive or as, as, as heavily put on as the yellow. This is just, I just want a light overlay with this color. So here we go. Hmm. Okay, it looks like this overlay of brown was a little too much. Um, it seemed to have more coverage through the airbrush than it did with the um, during the brush on stage. So I'm going to go over this with another coat of the ivory sand just to kind of lighten up the tone a little bit. Oh, that's better. That's better. I like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. See, there, there's, there's no formula or recipe or painting schedule for this. It's just a lot of trial and error. Now this, I had a couple of places where the brown went on real heavy, so this is, this is taking it back down again. Oh, I like this now, baby. Oh, I like this. This is gonna, it's gonna prep it real nice for the oils, the over, the top color. And I'll probably, I'll probably seal this with some Krylon matte sealer. See how that goes before the application of the oils. that a lot right there oh that's pretty that's pretty now let's make a quick okay, comparison. here in front is a set of antlers with just the US uh, with just the um, ivory sand and behind it are the antlers with the US sand and then overlaid with the ivory sand again it's very very slight I not really showing up on camera the way it is in in person let me see I can adjust the lighting here, if that helps any. And uh, that just makes seem to make everything red. Well, you can see that this one is lighter, and this one is has more brown tinge to it. So I think, I think I'm going to continue along this vein, except on this this one here, I'm going to be a little more careful. I'm going to hold the antlers farther away from the airbrush when I make the application. And here again is the antlers with the ivory sand or the sand ivory alone 
and then with the ivory sand overlay with the US sand and then toned down again with the ivory sand I'll tell you either either one can be used as the main base coat for the antlers either color uh, I think this is a little closer to the actual antlers they have a yellow tinge to them but I, I think this one with the brown and then the overlay again with the US with the uh, ivory sand is going to be the better choice to start with so right here I think this is the the better of the two uh, base uh, primer jobs I guess you call them you know I have two nice base colors here to work from I'm not I don't know I'm not a hundred percent certain yet that I'm going to go over this one here with brown with the uh, US sand and then the ivory sand again I don't know if I'm going to do that I'm going to complete this set first see how it turns out uh, decisions decisions but that's that's the way this goes don't they look like like little kids and like superhero shorts superhero diapers <laughs> oh I've been doing this for too many freaking days anyway to be continued <laughs> well I do did it no I did I um I gave a real light coat of the um, US sand over the sand ivory but I, I did it from a further distance back. <coughs> Originally, I got too close with the, with this set here. I held it about 10 to 12 inches back from the antlers. And from what I can see, with my eye, I can tell this is a uh, much milder looking color right now. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to work off this as my base. And with this one as my base. And we're going to see which comes closest to the, uh, the natural antlers. It'll be a toss-up. But... We'll see how it goes. And um, now the uh, oil wash and whatnot, I think, will be next. Well, gang, at this point, I'd say it's a toss up as to which one comes closest to the actual base color. I'm leaning more towards this one here, which has just a very, very light coat of the ivory sand over the. Um, the base color of the antlers. These, this has a lot of yellow to it. This is the uh, the actual antlers. It has quite a yellow tinge to it. So I'm thinking this one here might do better. Now I can strip this one down, this one here, and do it completely over, or I can give it a little stronger coat of the ivory sand. Let's see what happens. This happens to be the set that I, I want for the life-size mount. Okay, so uh, I don't know whichever one works. They're both they're both really in good condition now with all of the the tips of the tines rebuilt and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to see how uh, the uh, thinned oil paint wash goes over these antlers. Uh, I'm going to seal them with Krylon first. Like I say, I'm going to let them sit 24 hours. Seal them tomorrow with Krylon mat. Then um, wash over them with oils. And we'll see how that goes. Later, Gator. Okay, I've gone and duded it. I stripped the paint off the uh, darker brown antlers. They were really a little too brown as a base. What I've got here, and you can see in these two, this is the actual antlers, the original, the real antlers, and these are the copies that the ivory sand with a light, super light overlay of the U.S. sand yielded the best color result. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the same thing to this set. This is the set I have. I have classified I guess you'd say for the life-size deer specified for the life-size deer so I want the color better so I'm gonna go over this with the sand ivory or ivory sand then I'm going to give a light misting over it with the US sand I don't want it I don't want these to, to look brown I want them to look more on the palish yellowish side 
as you can see here between the actual antlers and the reproductions right behind them. You see how that, that color comes closer to the real thing back here. This here. And of course they'll look even more realistic once they get the uh, dark wash on them which will for a better want of a better term it will weather the antlers and give me that real look that I'm looking for. But my base color I, I needed it to be correct and I think I've got that now with this. I think I've, I've actually hit on it. Um, I say this this was too brown plus it looked painted very painted and the way I took the paint off just to show you it could be done hot water uh, with Dawn uh, dishwasher soap with a sponge got it all wet down then I started scrubbing it with a uh, wide nylon brush uh, the back of a the scouring side of a of the sponge then I for the last of it I brought in my uh, soft brass brush and uh, went over the rest of it with that and that's really what removed the um, the brown paint from the antlers so it can be removed and you don't need any harsh solvents to do it so I'm gonna paint this to match this reproduction right here which is closest to the original right here and uh, we'll go from there working on the other two detailing them all right I've gone ahead and painted and began the detailing of one side of the uh, the antlers this is the right side the side with the big ding or birthmark we'll call it in the antlers um, as you can see it's it's coming along real nice I'm getting a nice match to the originals, which are back here. <clears throat> I went ahead and did the one side off camera, just to make sure that what I'm doing will look good for you guys watching. Uh, but I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did on the. I'm going to do it on the other side. Now this is not even the um, the antler set that I've chosen for my life size buck. I wanted to make sure I could do this before I worked on that one, my quote-unquote good set, okay? Um, but this one here, you can't even tell that the tips have all been replaced on it by now. So I'm going to go ahead and finish working, and you can watch as I work and, I guess, come along. Okay, so what I've got here, <clears throat> I'm using a little plastic container, inverted, so that the bottom is now the top, and that'll be my, my palette. Um, the reason I'm not using a, a, my regular oil painting palette is because this is going to be very loose and the little little ridge, or the little indented center will hold the liquid really well. I have uh, some clear turpenoid. My palette consists of burnt umber, ivory black, and the good old titanium white. And I mean, there's just a touch of this used here and there. Um, you can see on the antlers themselves, on the real antlers here, some of the areas are very light and it's almost a white cast could be put on them, which I did on the reproductions here. You can see that. And it's been blended in, I think, really well. Um, the other thing I use is a hair dryer and, of course, paper towel. Um, I apply the base color with a, a cheap. China bristle um, chip brush and um, let's begin let's just begin and what I'm going to do I'm going to put some paint along the edge of my little palette here like so a little bit of brown and just a wee bit of black. Actually, it's, it's close to the same amount. It's how you use it that matters. The next thing, <clears throat> I put the white down a little later on when I get into detailing. This is just to create the wash. 
Now, I have to be careful. I don't want to grab this side. This side is still very wet. It'll take a good 24 hours for that to set up and dry really well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the uh, chip brush into the turpenoid. I'm going to make a big puddle in the middle of the uh, cap, the tub. Get a little bit of the burnt umber and I want to make a a wash. I'm going to go over the antlers like so. Just like this. Now, a buddy of mine, Eric Carter, who does some fantastic whitetail castings, reproductions, he likes to use a uh, lacquer thinner. Now, I would have, except for the fact that on this set, if you recall, I use an, acry an acrylic, <clears throat> an acrylic airbrush paint to give me my base color, where I took it from the brown that it was molded in to give it a kind of a yellow cast. Then we went over that with a little bit of a um, little bit of the uh, the U.S. sand, it was ivory sand over the top and then U.S. sand over that. So if you put lacquer over acrylic, you will destroy the acrylic. So now I want to put it like so. And I'm going to get all sides. I want to get it all around. Don't worry, don't worry about the drips that are forming. That's not a problem, as you will see. Okay. Now I'll put these antlers over here. I need to get them out of the way. I need a little more turpenoid here. A little more brown. I'm just making a wash. Like so. And what this is doing, this is toning the antlers with a color. With their base, well, actually not base color. <clears throat> you got to remember, antlers are bone. So the actual color of an antler is kind of an off-white, almost a bone color. And what we're doing here, we are re reproducing the dirt and grime that deer get on their antlers where, as they rub the velvet off their antlers. And because bone is porous, it allows it to absorb a lot of the tannins in the bark of the trees and whatnot. That gives it the brown color. That plus the dirt and the blood from their velvet. It all combines to create the color that we have on antlers. Now that that's done, I want to get the shine off. I want to just dry the oils just a little bit. So I want to take the shine off. I'm going to use my blow dryer. I want to reduce the shine. This will evaporate, this will evaporate the turpenoid and leave the oil paint on the antlers by itself. You can see how that's, that the shine is going down because it's being dried. That's definitely a good thing, as Martha Stewart might say. And believe it or not, she doesn't do taxidermy, but she likes taxidermy. So she's okay. She likes to have antlers and things as uh, interior decor. Now you see how it's already giving that look? Here. See how it's already getting a look? of antler it's already getting that antlerish look to it now the thing to do is to use smaller brush and to start filling in the veins the veins on antlers are all of these little lines now if you have the original set of antlers as I do you can directly copy what's in front of you. If you don't, work from photos. It doesn't matter. Work from photos. 
what you want to do is you want to go along and start recreating the veining just like so okay now take the chip brush and just kind of blend this in now the oils the oils are going to stay real workable for a long while and like I said I've got my deer's own antlers here so this is going to be easy to kind of copy I have to take into account that they're an old set of antlers and that they are dirty and whatnot but I'm going to continue on All right, at this point I'm adding a little bit of black to the brown wash and I'm going to start recreating some of the other markings on the antlers. Not markings, but some of the other dark areas. Darkened in areas. And like I say, I'm using my antlers as my guide. But if you don't have the set of antlers, if you've bought yourself a set of reproductions and you want to you want to do them up to dis mount on a display in, in, for your shop or whatnot, or just in your own home. It's an easy enough thing to do. I like using oils because you have plenty of time to work. Unlike if you used acrylics, you'd be really rushed and hurried. I don't like being rushed and hurried. I don't work fast. I don't work slow. I sort of work half-fast. I go along with this and I'm putting lines. Now, as strong as these lines look, they will soon be not so strong. Go in. Stop breaking them up. Blending them in. Like so. Now, if you find that your colors look a little too strong, these are oil paints. Go over, wipe it away, start again. No shame in starting over. Just like so. And down by the base, it's a little more on the gray side you see by the antlers I've got here recreating this down here now like so now normally I would be holding the skull cap and moving the antlers around right in front of me but because this is on camera I have to try and work a little differently like I tell you this is not a pleasant way to do this I like picking them up and holding them now there's a dark area up here that I need to recreate right here uh, well, I could turn this to you guys, but it's not really exactly, you don't need to really know, see what I'm doing. Just get an idea that I'm copying, I'm copying what I see. And like I say, if you don't have the original set of antlers that you want to recreate, if you just have a set that you bought from one of the suppliers, everyone sells antler reproductions get yourself some references get yourself a book and look up your references use that as your guide doesn't have to be the exact guide but uh, just something to guide you along that's all you need now we get a little smaller brush for blending this is a another brush that I like to stipple with I just go along and I blend this in. I blend it down. 
nice thing it fills in the veins. The veins, like I say, the veins are those lines on the antler. They are called veins. I don't know who decided to call them veins at first, but I call them veins. Um, now I'm, I'm matching an exact set, so I have an exact pattern to copy. It's got some really odd striations and marks to it. And some of these I will leave to dry overnight and then possibly blend them away or blend them in. Now, now I'm going to put a little white down on the edge of the, um, the container. Just a bit. Because now I'm coming into an area where I'm getting a gray base. And that gray base is, whoops, got right along in through here. That's the same thing that happened on this other side. And for that, I have another brush that I use. Dip it into the turpenoid. Touch it down to the white. Get a little bit of white on there. And it's going to look strong, but then you're going to blend it out. Like so. Right here. Go up. Here. And go up. Now, take the chip brush and blend this. Now what I can tell you is the white will will keep a shine to it. So I'm gonna take the hair dryer. Now, taking down the shine, all that does is take the shine down. It doesn't take the paint away. That white paint is still there. And it's now we have, a, we have a good base to continue blending. You can see we've got veining on this antler, on this left antler here. This, this deer also had a horrible stain on the tip of its antler. It's always had that stain. I tried all different, all different things over the years to get rid of it and can't, so it's part of my deer. Now I'm going to go in here, we're going to combine the gray and the brown, go over here and do a little veining right along here. I know it looks strong right now, because it is, but that will be worked out. Like so. Okay, now let me get the chip brush in here and work this out. Do do do. Badoot, 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 badoot. And I'm just going to keep going like this. Until these antlers are finished. Well, this is what it takes. This is what it takes to accomplish this. It's just a lot of copying nature. Just I'm just copying nature. The nature I'm copying 
in this instance is my deer's own antlers. Another thing to do is to stipple. I'm going to use the chip brush. I did it on the other side. I'm going to do it here. Just stipple the brush into the paint. Yeah. Like so. Stipple the brush in. Get to your area. Check out the original and stipple. Go along. Stipple it. Once that's done, take the blow dryer because there's a lot of uh, turpinoid, so it's very, very shiny. We want to knock the shine down. Stippling is a nice action to get a good bone effect and a good weathering effect, which is what you're looking for when you're coloring antler reproductions. Like so. Get in here and we stipple. Stipple. Dry it. Nice thing about oil paints, you can keep working it. Now I'm going to recreate this here, this pattern. And to do that, I get a little more turpenoid, spread it around, get my burnt umber, that's very red, a little bit of black, blend it, like so. And now just start copying what I see. Let's copy what's there. There's no trick to this. There's no magic to it. Nothing magical. Nothing trickster about it. You just keep on going. Now I take my one little blender and I start blending. Feather this in. I take these paint marks, these paint streaks, and reduce the man-made effect of them. I want them to look natural, not mechanical. And you just keep doing this over and over again until you get the look that you desire. A look that matches the set of antlers you're recreating.
like so, like so. And I just, I'm just going to keep going. But you can see how that's coming into itself and how it's beginning to match. Now I'm just going to keep on going and when I come back you'll see the antlers completed. And here's the finished reproduction. The only thing need, needed to do is to give it a coat of matte uh, sealer when it's dried but uh, I think that looks real good. That looks pretty doggone realistic and it's really easy to do. Um, I may tweak it a little bit over the next day or so uh, just to kind of fool with it, maybe lighten it up just a shade. Um, but it's oil paint. It'll be workable tomorrow and uh, basically though this is it. This is what you got. So Am I happy? Very. Will I do it again? Sure, why not? It's pretty fun. Pretty fun. Fun stuff. Until next time, adios amigos.